The false cause is a fallacy that happens out of causal reasoning, and it happens when a speaker argues that one thing causes another when they don't have enough evidence to prove that that thing caused the other. And this is referred to in Latin as post hoc ergo propter hoc. In fact, you might have heard this fallacy referred to previously as the post hoc fallacy. This translates roughly to after this, therefore, because of this. Arguing basically that because B followed A, A must have caused B. And this is actually where a lot of superstitions come from. Someone will be walking around and a black cat will cross their path and then they'll fall into some misfortune later on. Maybe they trip over something or they lose something that's valuable to them. And then they'll say to themselves, well, that black cat crossed my path, so I was bound to have bad luck. When in reality, the black cat had nothing to do with the later misfortune. It's just a superstition. There's no causal link between the two. Let's have another example. Take a look at this graph. The red line indicates ice cream sales and how they peak and fall over time, whereas the orange line indicates violent crime index. And you can see that ice cream sales and violent crime tend to rise and peak and fall together. And so I could probably draw the conclusion that if I were to eat ice cream, then I'm going to cause some kind of violent crime, right? Wrong. This would be an example of a false cause argument. It's ludicrous to, tr to try and explain that ice cream causes violent crime. It just doesn't make any sense. In this case, this false cause is caused by the time of year. It just so happens that ice cream sales peak during the summer months of May, June, July, and August, and that violent crime also tends to peak during those same summer months. It's really hard to commit crime when it's too cold outside or when it's snowing, so crime tends to increase during the summer months and no one wants to eat ice cream when it's cold outside or snowing, so they tend to eat it when it's warmer. So this would be an example of a false cause, right? If I were to say that ice cream caused violent crime, that would be factually and logically incorrect. And we run into a lot of different false causes in our lives. You might have heard the old wives' tale that if you go outside with wet hair or without a coat when it's cold outside, that you're much more likely to catch a cold. When in reality, you're much more likely to catch a cold when it's cold outside because you are stuck inside with more people and germs have a, more, have a higher propensity to spread when you're inside in these close quarters. So it's not the cold outside that causes your cold, it's the fact that you are hiding from that cold by being inside more often. Another false cause argument that we hear frequently right now is that vaccines cause autism. And in reality, there is no causal link between vaccines and autism. The idea behind this link came from a debunked study that had cherry-picked evidence and demonstrated that vaccines cause autism, right? They said that these children got vaccines and they are also autistic, therefore the vaccines caused their autism. And this false cause is perpetuated because it just so happens that we tend to get a big bulk of our vaccines around the age of two and three, and the age of two and three is also when we tend to get the first signs of autism showing up in children. And so it's not that autism and vaccines are linked, it's that they just happen to happen around the same time. So we see these kinds of false causes all the time and we need to be wary of them and call them out when we see them.